Good morning and welcome to today's service. Hello. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to open our service with a, a wonderful song by Dalton. So, Good morning, um, everybody. If you're, if you're willing and able, why don't you stand on up for me? Stretch yourselves out a little. Hello? <laughs> Hopefully that's a fair number of people. Get ready to snap your fingers and tap your toes here, okay? Because... We're talking about the water of life this morning, so you know what time it is. It's time to wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Who's that young girl dressed in red? Wait in the water. Must be the child that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Who's that young girl dressed in white? Wait in the water. Must be the child of the Israelites. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble, God's gonna trouble, God himself is gonna trouble the water. Yeah. I said God himself is gonna trouble. Well, that's our Dalton. Thank you, Dalton, that was great. So um, we're gonna invite the children up at, while we're doing that. If you wanna stand up, turn around, or sit down, turn around, and wave to the camera, because we're on Facebook Live and also on YouTube Live, so. No controlling that boy. <laughs> so welcome again. I'm Charlie Bourne. I'm a practitioner for today and also in service. Is we have um, Christy and we have Dr. Mary, you know, who's uh, available for treatment afterwards. And we have Shirley. So um, welcome again. And if there's anybody new today, we do have a welcome packet if you want to Raise your hand and we'll bring one to you. And, and if not, we'll, um, you can pick one up on the way out. So um, 
If you have any devices that may go off, if you can just kind of mute those, we would appreciate it. And so also, we have Rich uh, Carey on the board desk. So if you have any questions about any of the announcements, you can see Rich. And then also, just a reminder, we have our social hall afterwards, so you can get snacks and drinks. And you know, it's a good time to socialize and visit with people. And you know, we encourage you, if you see somebody new that you haven't met before, just say hi, <laughs> you know, and start a conversation. It's, it's a great way to, to build community. So I want to uh, go through a few uh, announcements today. And so real quickly, we do have our used book sale today. Uh, it's through August 21st. So you can see that out in the foyer and also out in the entryway as well. And then also we have an exploring membership meeting today with Dr. Mary. That's 11.15 to 12.15. It's in the boardroom, it's, which is in our office. So if you go down the hallway and make a right, you'll, you'll see where that is. And then also we have, uh, we're promoting this. It's called The Great Race of Grace. It's Saturday, August 20th, uh, 10 a.m. start time. And we're trying to get teams signed up. And so this is a, a really fun event where we have teams that go out and you have a, assignments as to where you have to go as a team and then demonstrate that you've actually done that assignment. So there's crazy, wild, kind of fun things to do. Uh, you come back and then we share the videos or the pictures that you took to demonstrate that you did it. And the winning team is the one who did the most out of, out of the list. And then we'll have an a ice cream social at the end. So it's a lot of fun, a good way to build community, and it's a, it's a good fundraiser for us too. But most importantly, it's a, it's a, it's a community building event. So if you want to sign up, you can see Rich in the back, and there's a way to sign up for that. And then we have a, a special speaker and a workshop on August 21st. Reverend Lisa Carson, you may remember her from before, but she uh, moved to Thailand and has her own CSL community in Thailand. And she's back visiting the North State for about a month or so. And she's from Sacramento. She also was a minister in Chico for a while. But she's going to share her experience uh, as a, you know, in Thailand and also having a CSL community there. So she's, she's a wonderful presenter, and we hope you um, can make it for that. And then we have a class, uh, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success with uh, Shirley Wade, right here. And so that's starting uh, Thursday, September 1, 3 to 4.30. So you, if you have any questions about that, you can also pick up a flyer. Also, just wanted to remind you that we do have our awareness newsletter. You can sign up to get that you know, every month. It has a minister's message and a lot of updates, including updates on our minister search that we're doing. And we have a community prayer that you can join in with. And you can also pick that up in, in the back. <clears throat> And then we also have the program with all the events. And then I think this is really cool, the calendar too. So, and you can sign up for anything online. We now have a way of, of doing that. So with that, I'd like to invite Lori up to do today's reading. And also we're gonna have Shirley do uh, the prayer this morning. So Lori. There is an inner life into which we may plunge, an inner consciousness in which we may bathe. As water purifies itself by flowing, so our inner realization of the flow of life through us purifies the stagnant pools of our fears and doubts. Travelers crossing the desert covered with dust and filled with weariness Seek the refreshment of an oasis, the cool shade under a spreading palm. 
So we, with a mind weary with confusion and exhausted with too much effort, should seek a spiritual oasis, an inner communion with the invisible presence. Page 56 of 10 Ideas That Make a Difference by Ernest Holmes. Just as water purifies itself as it flows, so the impure stream of our mental life becomes purified by applied constructive thinking. It may well be that a lack of circulation in the physical body is a result of mental stagnation, while mental stagnation is the result of a lack of spiritual perception. Chapter 5, Section 8 of The Art of Life by Ernest Holmes. We must have a mental equivalent. There must be something inside of us which equals the thing that we want to do. Water will reach its own level by its own weight. Page 146 of Love and Law by Ernest Holmes. Right here and now, in this moment, we know the truth that there is only one. The divine omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, the source of all there is. Each person here is a unique expression of spirit we come together with open hearts, seeking guidance and inspiration, knowing that the divine presence which created this universe is that same presence within, which often guides us with a still, small voice. This presence enriches us with the healing power of love a love which reaches out from the center of our being. A blessing to the ones whose lives we touch. Looking within, we find guidance and direction for our lives. And we know we are blessed with the healing power of love. We are inspired to make responsible and wise choices. We have a sense of joy as we contemplate the greatness of that power which guides the universe and yet still maintains its place within our soul. We draw even closer to Spirit's wisdom and guidance this morning as we listen to Reverend Sue's message. It is with ease and grace and a deep sense of gratitude that I release these words to the law of mind, knowing that it is so. And so it is. Thank you. Shirley and Judy. Good morning, people. I have a special, there's a special guest of ours, Charlie and I have a special guest in our house, and it's Lil Price. She's over there looking adorable as she, as she smiles and giggles. Um, if you have a chance to say hello to her, she's from Bellingham. Um, I met her at Women's Retreat. Uh, I do those up there with Andrea 
on an annual basis, and I got to meet Price, and she became a heart daughter for Charlie and I. So she's, she's relocating, maybe, to a, not this town, but another one. Anyway, she's a delight, so it's Price. And you can ask her, well, that's an interesting name. And she's an interesting person. You'll want to meet her. So thank you for making it Price today. And I just got back from Bellingham doing the retreat. And it's this day we're talking about uh, the water of life. And the retreat was on Whidbey Island, surrounded by water. So uh, I really took advantage. You know, we're in Reading here in the heat. We've, Lori and I have been very envious of all the people going to the coast, getting to see the ocean waters. And so I had my taste. Water is just restores us. There is a beautiful quote from the Tao Te Ching that says, nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water, yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. Now I want to share something amusing that uh, I got permission to share, but I won't use the names of the people. But I was doing a, a vision, a little visionary uh, meditation with a couple of students in a class. And I invited them to imagine this body of water. And so the, the visualization went on, and I asked them to share afterwards. And one of them shared that they were taken to the healing waters of a certain sacred site and her experience there. The other person shared that their sacred water was sake. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you go. And then the more he described it, I'm thinking, yeah because you were supposed to drink the sacred water in. Oh, the sake, the warmth. And I said, I get that. We were just so, and I don't, I'm not a sake drinker on routine, but I, I have had the pleasure of that. There's a warmth about it that is very unique. So I, as I knew that, and I'm reading the Tao Te Ching saying, Yet dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. And I'm thinking, well, maybe sake, maybe <laughs> sake. But Lao Tzu also said, life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. So another analogy to water, to let us remind ourselves that things are always changing and reshaping themselves in our lives. Let them flow and not be that huge boulder of resistance. Let the waters wash over you. So today, I also dedicate this talk to, to Nancy Purnell. She's always inspired me about her love of, of Mother Nature, her love of the ocean waters, her love of watching the whales. So sacred water, she really taught me a lot about that. So let's pause and appreciate water in our lives as we recognize, yes, there is an abundance of water on this planet, but at the same time, we also recognize that we only have access and use of just a small percentage of it. And we've, many of us have explored the work of Dr. Emoto, and he awakened us to this idea of how we can affirm our thoughts. And he did a demonstration with, with water, and he would pray beautiful prayers over the water and then the, uh, freeze the water, and the crystals that formed were phenomenal. They were exquisite, detailed with great beauty. He also did the study with his science background of looking at what if you did negative thinking over the water and then froze it. And the, those crystals were very muddied and morphed and ugly, kind of like um, 
goblins. They were ju it just morphed in a very odd way. So it's a fascinating study. If you want to look at Dr. Emoto's work, you can see it on YouTube, but he also has a lovely book about it. And it's just the demonstration of our negative thinking. Now remember, we are 60 to 70% water. We're made of that in our constitution of our being. Our cells need the, the medium of water to exist. There, I, many years as a nurse, one of my favorite pieces of equipment to put people on was this particular scale that sectioned it out and let you know how much water percentage you had. So it lets you know if you were dehydrated or not. Fascinating. And some of us are, are operating at a 30%. We should be 60 to 70 of water, and then here we are at this lower percentage. So it shows that um, we need to balance ourselves to feel better, to feel more wholesome with the idea of taking in the sacred water. And then knowing that, bless the water, bless every sip of water that you take, knowing that it is creating great beauty inside of you. And you feel that love washing through you, washing over you. So as I talk today, I invite you to have your own memories of your childhood with water. Think about your experiences that you had. I remember as a child being so excited on the picnic days that we would go to Lytle Creek. And that area was sacred land to me. My, my parents would, would pack the, the four of us, my, four, my three sisters, and we'd all be in one seat, and we'd be arguing and bickering the whole way about, you touched me, you know, like, don't, don't, you, you're like, mom, her knee's touching me, the elbow, you know, and just, so they were just like at their wits end, and like, get out, go play. But when we hit, when our feet hit the ground, and we got to, to uh, go play in the waters of Lytle Creek. It was fresh mountain water, the, the snows, and so it was rushing water over the rocks, and we played and played and played for hours until we were just exhausted, but at the same time renewed. And so every adventure, and I know you've had those too, those picnics where they, the, our parents took us to the land by the waters so we could swim and play and just enjoy with full abandon just life itself. So think about that for yourself as you journey through your past because um, it's going to lead up to something we're doing at the very end. The hours spent also for me as a Southern California girl at the beaches, uh, hours, such horrible sunburns, but we played and played in the water, in the waves. We thought we were so cool. Now, I could exaggerate, and I said, oh, yeah, we body surfed 10-foot waves. Oh, yeah. But I think they're only like maybe six-inch waves. But they still were frightening at times because there was this moment where you, if you're going to body surf a wave, you have to wait till it just peaks a certain way. And if you miss that moment, Boy, it takes you under and around, and you, you come up out of the water upside down. You don't know which direction is up or down, and you, your bathing suit's off, and you're just like, well, that wasn't the right one. <laughs> but the idea of play and the power of the water, the power of these waves, the power of the undertow, all an analogy of the power of water as spirit in our lives, tumbling us and moving and shaping us, and sometimes stripping our clothes, water, to allow us to realize the analogy and the preciousness of water as a symbol in our lives. So also, can you remember the moments where you learned to swim in water? Can you remember that? How many dives did you do off the edge that was more like you did one of these, but it was just kind of a kerplop? And then you thought, I can run and dive. And then I'm going to go on the high dive. No, I'll just jump, thank you. But the many moments that we practiced our connection 
with water so we could be like the, the, the sea life and just glide and move and be one with the water. My first experience of snorkeling in Hawaii was so awesome to put those goggles on and to just put your face into the water. And th then you realize, say what? All these fish have been around me the whole time? I'm in the water, kind of freaky, but there's they're nibbling on you, but you didn't know that's what that was. You thought it was seaweed. But the awesome sea turtles, the, the yellow fish, the, the idea of such an amazing life form under the water, thriving and being water precious leaves us smiling, leaves us renewed, leaves us refreshed, so we celebrate it. But then we also have been taking it for granted. And that's what I want to share with you. There's a time now calling us to have a new respect for our water. 20 years ago, my son had the opportunity to travel with a friend of mine, Dr. Shannon Moore, to Africa. Shannon was very much involved with um, medicine in the third worlds and working with AIDS and working with orphanages, but she also noticed in her travels how dismal it was, the water supply. And you have heard those stories where the people take their big jugs and they carry them down, whatever container they can have. They walk miles to, to pick up water from the watering holes that the animals are sharing. So it's murky, muddy water. And then they carry it all back on their heads, back to their village, and cook and wash and clean with this water supply. She was very much aware of that. So what she did, she met with an engineer because she also witnessed the monsoons that just came, washed through the villages, and the water just went to another place, probably back to that water hole to refill it, but nobody could harvest that water. So they developed the water well system. They developed things on their houses that would allow themselves to collect the barrels of water. So they were able to thrive with this clean water and some of the dysentery and the GI distress that they would be experiencing would start, these precious little children could start to have a better life. So it's so a beautiful experience for my son to see when he's only 20 years old, to realize how valuable and precious water is and how science can merge with our understanding and help us with the supply of water so in this knowing, 20 years later, we look at our country now. And our country, our land in America is drying up. You wouldn't know that with some of the horrific storms back east and in the south. But California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, the land is cracked. The Salton Sea, Lake Mead, all of these water bodies are just dwindling. Colorado River dwindling. And yet it is, a, it is the source for people to thrive. It is what people need in community to be able to live and to have their medicines and to have their nutrients from water. So it's, it is a big deal. We're f large fines are being put upon people that are wasteful with water. So the call here has become more urgent. Let us be mindful. Here, um, Steve and Judy were telling me that in their backyard, they used to have the, the acid canal always running through, but it's dry. How many of you remember how beautiful Mount Shasta was for years. It always kept a snow cap, right? And now you see just bare, bare earth, still beautiful. But water and our livelihood, our, our need to, to thrive on this, knowing that the earth itself is hungry for this moisture. 
but there's ways to resolve it. When we had the little mini Bioneers Day here, we had John McCullough here, and he, he knows how to help take the waters that come upon our land right now and help to make sure that it doesn't just go off into nowhere, but that we can harvest that water. So it's important to pay attention to the message out there and not turn your head and say, I don't think that pertains to me because it pertains to all of us. Water has blessed us when we look at it as from a spiritual component. Many of you might have gone through the spiritual tradition of being baptized, of being blessed, right? Either dunked deeply into the water or tapped lightly upon your head. Water was your initial spiritual journey, blessing you. We recognize that it is a, a cleansing power. It is hydrating our cells, supporting our life, and symbolic of the divine. So I also know, even though I paint a grim story because we have compartmentalized water in a certain way, there is no lack. There is no lack. And there is a divine wisdom and an intelligence that is being called upon by each one of us to, to be more respectful of water, but also for the science to, to come in and help us realize how to take the salty waters of the ocean and make it so it can be something that we can take into our bodies. This divine intelligence, I know, will be the healing quickening that will allow us to continue to thrive on this planet. Years ago, Hild let's see, her name is um, St. Hildegard of Biggin. She says this, I am that which sends forth all the sparks of life. I am that living and fiery essence of the divine substance that flows in the beauty of the fields. I shine in the water. I burn in the sun and the moon and the stars, and I sustain the breath of all living. I breathe the breath of life in the flowers, the grass, the trees, the earth, and in you. And when you observe the waters flowing like a living thing, it is I, it is you. And the Buddha tags on this idea, we develop a mind that is vast like water, where experiences both pleasant and unpleasant can appear and disappear without conflict, struggle, or harm. Rest in a mind like the vast water. So I paint this picture, and then I return to the wisdom of the indigenous people, their respect, their wisdom for water, and their all-knowing they used to move their villages, their tribes, they would move them to where the lakes and the rivers would take them. They used that wisdom. They were so aligned with nature because they knew that the water was what would provide food, oxygen, and how the weather, weather patterns would shift depending on the water. They provide us, as we spoke, of joy and play and beauty, and they become our travel ways in certain areas. So we value water for more reasons than just taking a big drink of water. This I found very beautiful. And again, I take us back to the indigenous wisdom because there's a truth there. It was an indigenous woman who offers us the wisdom that women nurture life into being. They are the creators of life, the protectors of life that we create. So in her wisdom, she sees that women possess a unique magic. In her words, as women, we are able to call forth life from the other side and cultivate that life in a quiet space below our hearts a beautiful idea. 
image. Within our bodies, we hold an opening to the divine, a portal that allows souls to enter into this world. Because we, as the feminine, are connected to the divine through the space governed by our hearts, we are also the keepers of divine intuition and heart-based wisdom. Every life passes through our wombs, is nurtured, developed in water. We carry the waters of life within us, making us water bearers of the universe. This is why women's ceremonies are centered on water, governed by Grandmother Moon. Water lives within us and around us, is central to life, connected to the movement of the universe. Beautiful description of the value of how we look at the sacred idea of water. But when we're out of balance, there's the invitation, let us return to what are our core values. How am I connected to Mother Nature? And how can my being here on the planet at this time benefit the natural world? Science is informing us how to preserve, protect, and share our water resources. But people, it is our spirituality that will take us there, that will move us forward as we honor and value water, as we pay attention and allow our awareness to align with nature's way, the healing way, we will evolve. We are called to respect our water resource and wake up. So I've, I've painted a picture of the joy of water and the concern for water and knowing that it's essential for our health and our well-being for our body function, how to regulate our, our day in, day out living, how we regulate our temperature and our cells. It's all about clean, pure water for our best vitality in our experience. Ernest Holmes says, just as water purifies itself as it flows, so the impure stream of our mental life becomes purified by applied constructive thinking. It may well be that a lack of circulation in the physical body is a result of mental stagnation, while mental stagnation is the result of a lack of spiritual perception. So let us take this rest of this time together. This morning I'm gonna invite Judy and Steve forward. Well, I would like to take you on a journey and they are going to create a beat together that is the beat of the human heart. And so as you get settled in your space, I invite you to, to remember that this is an opportunity where we can apply our spirituality and bring mindfulness into our activity today. Bring mindfulness as you drink and partake of water, as you bathe, as you observe raindrops falling, as you watch waves of the sea, as you watch the rivers flow, as you watch and give thanks for the nourishment to our land and to our wildlife and to our animals. Thich Nhat Hanh is brilliant in finding the ways to bless and pay attention. He says this simple uh, stanza about turning on water Water flows from high in the mountains. Water runs deep in the earth. Miraculously, water comes to us and sustains all life. Even though we know the source of water, we still take its appearance for granted. But life is possible because of water. Our body is 70% water. Food is grown and raised by water. Water is our friend, a bodhisattva that nourishes the many thousands of species on earth. It benefits the numberless. Reciting the gatha before turning on the faucet or drinking water enables you to see the stream of fresh water in your own heart and to feel completely refreshed. Celebrate this gift. Cultivate this level of awareness. So this 
is our practice this morning together. Spiritual practice, we speak a lot about that. I invite you to close your eyes and take the journey around the world. Remember who you are as you take the seat, the blessed seat. I am entering sacred practice. This ritual comes from Ancient Rising by Peggy Ayers. It is listen. Starting in the East, with an ancient Shinto prayer of welcome and blessing for a new year dawning, we give thanks for the sacred waters from every corner of the globe, bringing in the fresh breeze of spring, the peeping of the frogs, the crickets chirping, the flight of the majestic herons overhead. Listen, listen and see. Led by the ancient Malay poetry cycle of mystic and animist wonders, we channel south to receive more messages and mark the might thrust of a pod of baleen whales as they break the surface of the ocean next to the lands of Nagati Peru, Marari Iwi in New Zealand. Picture that, the whales rising from the waters. Then accompanied by Sanskrit chants, we spiral across Mother Africa to the flourish of Oyu, Yoruba, Dundun drums in the Orisha devoted Nigerian dance. The cleansing fire, all humanity arising from the same source and reunited again. We circle, we circle. In equality, side by side, in the highland heat, each one of us a spark of gratitude, radiance, creativity, and joy, holding the wisdom of the bonobo crocodile, the elephant, lion, meerkat, rhinoceros, wildebeest. Gently, in our hearts, we move past the blazing of an infinity of council fires. Shifting, shifting to a Sufi prayer for spiritual healing, reciprocity, we grow relationships of deep listening, and we circle west to the people of the Americas, grounding ourselves in the rich embrace of earth, restoration as the tupelo branches fill with honeybees, chittering raccoons, the howling of the wolves, making their presence known as the beloved creatures pass the staff to Seminole, we are offered traditional song honoring plant spirit for the nurturing healing power followed by a Lakota blessing for Mother Earth and the horse nation. An Oji Cree sacred pipe ceremony for the bonding of all people and in the leaf strewn meadow we join a lively metis dance and a fiddle jig that celebrates the abundant harvest from orchard, field, and fen. Listen and feel we are around the world as we read the glyphs on stone and reveal the red insignias of earth okra. We raise our voice in an honor song for the passing of the Biotuk of Newfoundland whose ancestral spirits hover on the margins of the circle and then crossing the great shell of Turtle Island, we give space to the Hawaiian earth keepers. They lead us in the Hohopono chant as we offer sacred blessings to all our brothers and sisters, the more than human world, the entire earth community. The prayer, I am sorry, please forgive me. I thank you, I love you. Then blown to the north by a hurricane force gale, we, we hear the beauty of the Greek prayers, the strains of Romanian music, Hungarian folk songs rising in the wintry wind, followed by the Basque petition to the goddess Mari to return to her mountain cave a Gaelic blessing that calms the breeze and offers kindness, compassion, love, devotion. This is happening around the world, united again with the sacred flora and fauna found in the folk tales of old Europe and ancient Slavic Kolo 
round dance moves us as night falls and we complete the circle and take our transformative expressions of unity and diversity back to our beloved landscape of home. People of the earth, sacred as the earth is sacred, our inner existence with all being is our greatest joy. And we form an unbreakable bond of earth community rooted deeply in the love of the earth. We know that our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual well-being is dependent on the health of our land and our fate is bound to the fate of Gaia. Strong as earth is strong, we go forth as warriors for her protection and care. Let the beacon of bonfires blaze out, the sparks leaping coast to coast, mountain to mountain as we pass the torch, hand to hand in acceptance of the sacred trust and responsibility. May we forever bless the earth and may she bless us in return. May we treasure each other this week and remember this moment of oneness as we sip the sacred waters that sustain us. Watch water flow. There is no space it does not fill. Be like the water. Give it to everyone and to everything. And as we do this together, we know that it is so, and it is possible, and it is true. And together, we make it happen. Thank you, God, and so it is. Thank you. I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of freedom and the moon and the way was easy and the path was clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land And the guardian stars are shining And the night is bright and clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon spread over the land I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang and the sound was easy and the song was clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang and peace spread over the I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of rain and the rain spread over the land I dreamed of rain and the rains came
Thank you, Dalton. I'd like to invite the ushers forward. I think I'm thirsty. <laughs> so I'm going to read an affirmation as we prepare for the offertory. As I prepare to give my offering, my heart is filled with love and appreciation since what is offered here is for my spiritual well-being. I am filled with gratitude, knowing life stays in balance for as I give, I do receive. Please join me in this blessing, for I know that we are so blessed. We're so blessed by the one, the one spirit, the one love of God flowing to each and every one of us as we, and as I know, as we each reach down and give from our heart to this center to help build this community and have it thrive, that these gifts go out beyond the center into our community, and it does make an impact. And so I know that as I give, I do receive. In this center, on behalf of the board and the trustees, we take these gifts with great respect and with great honor as we allow these gifts to circle back to each and every one of us and into the community. So giving great thanks, I allow this prayer into law, knowing full well it is so. And together we say, and so it is. So just a reminder, we have the social hall, we have the book sale, we have community to visit, and we have a wonderful grounds if you want to just go out and explore. We have a, a wonderful landscape team that puts in a lot of hard work, and we would love to have more help, but you know what, it's, it's so beautiful out there, and so just enjoy the grounds. So we're gonna have a closing song by Dalton, and then um, Sue and I will come up and say goodbye. A and a membership meeting with Reverend Dr. Mary uh, in, the board, in the boardroom. So remember that, and then the social hall. Thank you. All right, if anybody who's comfortable could stand on up. Here at home. If you don't know this song, you'll pick it up within a couple of rotations because it just goes round and round. I want to hear you sing loud now. All good, all good. Holy, holy, all good, all good, holy, holy, all in my mind, in my heart, in my soul, let me know all is good, holy, holy, that's how it goes.
Dalton. We've enjoyed having you this summer. Uh, just so much of you. Appreciate you. So, much. so enjoy all the things that are we've laid out for you today. And don't forget to meet Prize. And if you are new today and you wanted to go to the grounds, please come forward so we can introduce ourselves to one another. And Mary, Christy, and Shirley and Charlie are here for prayer support. So, blessings on your day. Have fun drinking water today. Bye -bye.